So I'm actually going to talk about Google Cloud Functions. Um, I'm going to talk about Google Maps as well because the example I'm going to use happens to be using Google Maps. But um, so Google Cloud Functions are a little bit different than the Firebase functions that uh, remain, and I think uh, real we're going to talk about. Um, except they're actually just the same as well, because as quite often Firebase stuff is is Google stuff with a different name. So what I'm going to show you is going to be pretty similar to some of the Firebase things that, that, that we'll see in, in, in a later session. So let's just take a look at this and find out what Cloud Functions actually are. So before I get started on that, I want to just talk about the idea that we're doing an app script thing, um, but we're talking about more and more talking about Cloud things. And the reason for that is because uh, Google Cloud Functions, for example, give you a great way of extending your quotas that sometimes get in the way when you're using app script um, because you can you can delegate the work that you would have otherwise done in, in app script to the cloud and therefore that allows you to get a lot more done a lot, a lot more quickly and also reuse stuff easily so it's a it's a great fit uh, cloud functions whether it's firebase or, or, or google um, with app script so let's talk about what they are first of all so Node.js is a, I'm sure you're all familiar with what that is by now. So an instance of Node.js runs on a cloud virtual machine and we call it in a number of ways. One is that we can post a message to it using HTTP saying, could you go and run that function and have some arguments with which to apply. Another way you can do it is by using the Google Pub Sub um, or the Firebase pub sub, in fact, and you can publish a, a message to that. So we'll now talk about where these things actually are. So obviously they're in the cloud, but in fact, if you go to your Google Cloud console, you'll find um, that there, there's a special section for cloud functions. I'm kind of reluctant to actually go there and show you because things might screw up, but um, you'll see that cloud functions are there and any cloud functions that you've created are listed in there. So this um, one that we're looking at is the one that we're going to take a look in more detail shortly. So a cloud function becomes an object in your cloud storage. So how, how they get created is by writing a Node app. And for those of you that are not quite familiar with Node yet, uh, you, you use JavaScript to write in Node, so that's very handy for us app scripters because it's what we know. Um, you create a, an app which is able to react to being uh, woken up in the ways that we talked about before. And it just simply does what, whatever activities it's supposed to do. And it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. There's two things that make up an app. The, one is the, the code itself, which is usually in index.js. And the second thing is what's called the package.json. And what that does is to describe the things that your app is going to use because when you start when you when you deploy a cloud function not only does it copy your code from your app to the virtual machine or to, to the object that we just looked at it also creates a good instance that's got all the packages installed that you're going to need so you can see here the four things i'm dependent on um, are all the maps and a couple of other things as well so when I deploy it, it installs Node. It also goes off to find these modules in what's called the NPM registry, which is where people put code that they want to share out to, to others. And it pulls that into your Node instance or your Node implementation and builds something that's just got the things you need, your code plus the things it's dependent on. So that's that, that's that's how that's how deployment of cloud functions work. And so how they get deployed is you start with your source code. Now the way I do it is 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 to automate it. I've got a small script that goes off and gets the, my latest code from from GitHub, and then it uses this command that we're looking at here, this this deploy command, to copy the to copy my source code along with my package.json, which then the cloud function deployment manager 
builds into an instance of Node with all the things I need in it. So where it's going to put it is you can see this GCF hell place that I have. That's a that's a, a folder, if you like, on cloud storage, which you can see here, and that's where it's going to put it. Uh, may I interrupt for of course, yeah. a, a quick point on your on your repository? Um, uh, I think I mentioned. I think I remember someone mentioning about the cloud functions that there's a way that um, they can sync to your GitHub repository, so you can work however you mm -hmm. want to work with GitHub, and then on the on the Google side, they'll sync, so you don't have to do any of that direct pulling. Uh, are you aware yes. of that? In fact, in fact, there's a there's a Git version that's private in the Google Cloud world. So what that means is, if you've got code that you don't want to share publicly, you don't want to be on GitHub. That's fine because you can just create it directly in the in in the cloud console, and your code stays there. Or alternatively, you can cause it to um, to notice. You can link it with your GitHub account, your Git, GitHub repository, I should say, and it will synchronize any changes that you make in that back to itself. The option of keeping it private or not. I, I, all my stuff is always open source, so I, I don't do it that way. But this that would be another way of doing it. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. So, how did it get executed? Well, there was four ways of doing it. In this particular example, then we are I'm using the the HTTP POST method. So essentially, I, I I post something at a URL. The URL is defined by the cloud functions. Each cloud function's got its own URL, and I send to it some arguments uh, as a as a POST package, which is what I'm doing here. So on the left-hand side, of these are the things I want to pass over to um, the cloud function, just as you would if you were calling google.script.run or something, you would pass it some arguments. And on the right-hand side, I'm just doing a regular URL fetch to the cloud function's URL and passing it the package that I think it needs to be able to run. So very straightforward as well. In a way, you can think, it almost, think of it almost exactly the same as from the client calling google.script.run. But of course, you can also call it from the server as well. OK, so um, just for this example, we're going to use Google Maps. Now, the thing about Node is it doesn't have a DOM like a typical JavaScript web app would have. So what that means is that you can't just use Google Maps in, in a cloud function because you because Node doesn't have a DOM. But there is a cut down version of Google Maps available, um, which, which you can get by the command that I'm showing here. And you can look at that up and see how it works. So this NPM install at Google Maps would install that package into your Node um, instance. And then you would start to use it by these commands that we're looking at here. So there's another thing which is quite useful because it's actually um, takes a little bit of time to deploy stuff to the cloud. And of course, you want to test it before you install it. So there's a thing called a simulator that runs locally. So it runs in your local node instance that you'd be using to test all this with. And you can make it deploy just as you would to the cloud, except you're deploying it locally. And you can pass it a message just like I did on the previous one, except all you're really doing is calling the simulator. And that will run it just as if it had run in the cloud. So you can do all your testing without going anywhere near deployment. And then, of course, you would use it as part of a, of a workflow. What we're going to look at in a minute is a whole bunch of apps that are all working together. And one of its one of the, the, the steps in the process is to call a Google Cloud function, which is the one that we're going to look at there. So you can really build in a workflow consisting of one or more cloud functions, all of which are, if you like, microservices that are really just designed to do a little thing. So instead of creating a, a monolithic app that does all kinds of stuff and runs out of quota and everything else, you can create um, microservices that are all joined together somehow. Okay. So we're going to look at um, this example. We're going to look at actually uses a, a cache, the, the cache to communicate between each other. So it does that by cooperatively updating data, which which it then subscribes to changes on, 
and then as a result of it does various things. So we'll, we'll get to the demo, I think, now. I was going to look at the, the cloud console, but it seems that this, oh no, here it is here, we've still got it. So this is the cloud console, and this is the storage bucket that contains my, uh, my cloud function. So if I wanted to deploy it, I'll, I'll, I'll just deploy it right now so you can see how easy it is. I have a little script that does it. What's it called? Um, so these are the commands involved in deploying a cloud function. We looked at them in the, in the slides a minute ago. So I'm going to run that. Um, so it's gone off to Git to get the latest version of the source code. Of course, it was up to date. Uh, and now it's deploying the function to my cloud storage bucket and the url what you're seeing up there the url is actually derived from from the name that you're seeing there so what's going to happen is eventually another version of this function is going to appear in the storage bucket i mean it may take a, a few minutes but so in the meantime let's go over and take a look at the at the demo so what we have here this is a, a funny little app that's supposed to be demoing a few things. So we've got a we've got a, a spreadsheet which has got a, an add-on running in it, and what it does is to generate random pubs in a in a particular area. So I'm just going to start it off, and we'll see what happens. So we're looking at city crawl, which is here so what's happening is that uh, you can see those pubs arriving so we'll stop that for a minute and i'll just let it go and actually we'll talk about what's actually happening um is that the app script that's running in the background is randomly asking that cloud function that we looked at to come up with pubs that are within a particular area and it does that by using google maps so, so it's doing it randomly. It's supposed to be kind of simulating. Imagine that you've got people who, who want to participate in a pub crawl. If you don't know what that is, that's where you go between pubs and get drunker and drunker as you, as you go between each pub. And this is supposed to be simulating people suggesting them. So it's doing it. It's not doing them, um, uh, you know, one after the other. It's doing them at a random intervals, and that's why it's taking a little bit of time between each one to, to make it a little, a little bit more realistic. So what then happens is that each time that it's got a certain number of pubs that are that are unallocated, it assigns them to, to a pub crawl, in other words, a group of pubs. Um, and then it plots a route, a route between each of these pubs. So it's been doing that as we've been talking. You can see it's generated quite a few. So I'm just going to stop it to, just for fun. So now if we go over to... Um, Let's see, let's go over to here. And we're reading the data that's been generated by the Google Cloud function. So that's all this stuff here. I won't, we won't look at it, there's loads of it. Uh, and now if we go over to a Maps client, so this Maps client is using the same um, data that we just looked at. So we can see the three pub crawls that we saw in the spreadsheet have arrived here somehow. So we can pick one, you can see that it's plotted the route between them and there's stuff down the side and another one and so on. So that's kind of pretty much all I wanted to show you because the, 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 the objective here is to look at how you can use cloud functions to glue together microservices that together make up quite a sophisticated app. That's it, any questions? Yeah, I was just going to mention, I like how you highlighted microservices. Um, I can see we're leveraging cloud functions for many types of microservices to help things along, which you say helps out with the quota demands from Google Apps Scripts. So I think that was a very good point. Not um, it's not just, it's actually not just the quota. The quota is, is useful, but, you know, they might change that one day and there won't be a quota problem. But the, the issue isn't not, not so much about the quota, although that's useful. It's mainly about the fact that you've created reusable services that you can pull together in lots of different ways. 
So, you know, what, what, what I've done here is kind of a fairly trivial example, but yet there's six apps that are cooperating in this to, to, to make this happen, and some of them are cloud functions and some of them are not. Um, and it's the ease of reusing stuff that you've already written to be able to create sophisticated apps without too much work. I think that's the key here and, and, yes. and the, the, the key enabler here. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thought I had was with Node.js, which I've gone into a few times, but not extensively, um, I do like a browser base. Um, Cloud9, C9.io is something that I've used. And I think Real has used that a lot. Uh, so that's a nice uh, browser experience to work so, with Node.js. So that's exactly what I'm using. The, the, what we're looking at here is the code for the cloud function in Cloud9. Rio also, um, in, the, in the clip we just recorded, there's um, a long online editor um, that's available from. So if you go, Bruce, if you're able to go to the um, command line from the, the console project, there's a, a button um, just above the, that command line um, that, open, that allows you to browse some, some of the, the function files. So, so here's um, the source code that I've got into now um, for, I don't know if it's the same one, but for something that's for something else. Um, so, you know, my code is, is present in GitHub and also locally here, so I can go in here and edit if I want to. The other thing that I think is very important is that we've only looked at the way of at the at the invocation of cloud functions by hitting a URL, but you yeah. know you can update a, a, an object in, in in a store, which makes it waking up as well, which is fantastic because now you've got now you've got a way of um, automatically invoking a cloud function if you ever change it if if you, if something else changes something, which is which is really good too.